Hello friends and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to Setup Paradise. If you're new here, consider subscribing to this channel. So in today's video, guys, we're going to dive into a very interesting discussion. So I've been wanting to make a video on this topic for quite some time, but I think an opportunity never quite presented itself. So and I finally have the opportunity to talk about this. So in today's video, guys, I'm going to play to you this clip from the Whatever podcast. Women typically seem to be more accepting of a guy with a high body count, but they don't seem to understand that the inverse is the opposite. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, typically when we find out a girl has a higher body count, we're kind of like, oh. Mm -hmm. Why is it's that? It's just the way the world is, yeah. It's just a, kind of like an instinctual male thing. Mm -hmm. Just kind of like how you wouldn't date a five foot three dude that worked at McDonald's ever. It's the same thing for us, just like something about it in our like DNA. We are like low key repulsed by it. So if you don't know what the whatever podcast is a very famous podcast. I actually don't watch that podcast. I just have like these constant stream of YouTube shorts on the podcast. So I kind of see snippets of it. But basically, essentially, this podcast is about kind of like the fresh and fit podcast, if you know what I'm talking about. But basically, you have these, you know, red pill guys who will invite these like a panel of these you know, only fangirls, these kind of promiscuous, sort of speak women, you know, who lead a very promiscuous lifestyle. And they basically will shame them and call them out on their behavior and just make themselves feel better, essentially, you know, and basically say how, you know, these women are destroying society. And this is why men feel the way they feel. Um, and, and so on. This is why men are not interested in marriage anymore. And, and so on and so on, you know, who controls access to sex, men or women? Women. Women, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I would say hookup culture, if we want to see hookup culture stop, because women kind of control when sex happens. So do you have anyone to blame but yourselves on that one? Do you know? Thoughts? Okay. Yeah, crickets. Here we go. Okay, so... And also, and so interesting that it happens that, you know, in this whole, you know, world of the manosphere and these red pilled guys, you know, and this is how, what they're called, these guys who do this. You know. But so happens that on this particular podcast, they invited Lila Rose. And if you don't know who Lila Rose is, I really admire her. The first time I heard Lila Rose speak was um, she was debating this other person on basically defending, you know, the pro-life uh, movement and she was you know she's a big advocate against abortions she's a christian just an incredible lady you know she does so much good she advocates for the nuclear family and all of these great things my Ooh. understanding of love is that it is totally wanting the best for the other person and that it's committed and that it's sacrificial and that it's exclusive it's faithful and fidelity, I think, is a really important part of love. And if you don't have fidelity in love, then you don't have the security and the opportunity for full vulnerability. So she was invited on this podcast. So she comes in onto this podcast and she basically debates this red pill, this top G guy, Justin Waller, his name. So basically, he's like a businessman. He's fit. Um, you know, he's this like bachelor guy. And he's uh, kind of like Andrew Tate. If you know who Andrew Tate is, you know, Justin Waller is pretty much like same type of dude, just, you know, different face. You know, they get into this very heated debate, you know, and I love how Lila Rose just calls him out, you know, on this. Because, you know, he, he this guy literally comes onto the podcast. He's it's like, he's super smug, you know. He's just like, you know, talks with his, this whole machism and this whole, like, arrogance, you know. And Lila just like, you know, she conducted herself so perfectly, so well, and she was so precise in her questioning and, and I just love it because it really exposes you know the hypocrisy of this whole red pill movement ask you one more question far away honey. okay <laughs> um, if you have a place and only one place in your heart for one woman or you want to have one woman in your heart I think you said why don't you just commit to one and choose to be faithful to her I'm just not wired that way. I spent my whole 20s trying to fix myself. I thought you're something was wrong with me. You're a man of self-control. You, you work out. You do business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can possess your own, your own power it's and do not, direct it just, the way you want to direct it. It's not how I am. It's not how I am. I've you tried. think that might be a limited mindset? I think it's none of your business, but I don't want you to think I'm triggered by you. I'm not. Okay. 
I saw somebody say that, and I think that's interesting. I think you're annoying, but I'm not <laughs> triggered. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, you are. You're annoying <laughs> in, in like this goody two shoes type way, and that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna live my life on my terms, unapolog- uh, unapologetically, mm-hmm. like truly. So. Uh, you can ask me this 85 different ways. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm going to walk out of here the same man. And let me summarize essentially what I think this whole red pill, pill movement is about. So this whole red pill movement was birthed out of this reaction from, you know, this really crazy feminism wave that we had, you know, where they blame the patriarchy for everything, where they emasculate men. So out of that, you have now this extreme rebound of these red-pilled, hyper-masculine men who don't believe in marriages, they don't believe in committing to one woman. They're basically, you know, they believe in just, you know, as a man, the only thing you should do is wear how much money you got in your bank account, being top G, being fit, don't get married because, you know, the woman is going to divorce you, she's going to leave you, so... Don't do that, you know, just be a top G, you know, and don't really commit yourself. Just, you know, be forever bachelor. And these men oftentimes, you know, they, they're the one with the platforms. They're giving relationship advice when they themselves are not married, at least not publicly. They don't believe in the public marriage. You know, they're not, they're not having kids, you know, but they have so much to say into, in terms of like how a man should be, you know, I'd have multiple family. <laughs> oh, you never know. I might like family more than you so much. I have mm-hmm. five. Do you think that's a good thing to have multiple families? I think it's good if there's one dad and there's not a bunch of step parents involved and, and the dad can be the hero and those five families live a 10x better life than they would have otherwise. Just ma'am, I do. Facts. But you don't think that it will be ultimately a, 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 an opportunity for jealousy or disharmony amongst women? Two are always going to be jealous. What, what, what's changed about that? Women have marriage. been jealous all the way through time. So. I'm not jealous in my marriage. Well, I don't care about your marriage. I'm talking about mine. Mm-hmm. What my life is going to be. So I don't answer to you. So. That's my answer. I'm gonna run my my situation exactly how I want to, and generally, when I do that, that's when I have the most happiness, let's say, in my life. So, that's all. And you would want that for your daughters? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I live my life unapologetically on my terms. So, if my daughters that are overly spoiled and and educated in every way and have friends all over the world and world traveled in the best schools in the world, if they have a problem with me at the end of the day, then they can kick rocks too. I, I, I'm not going to simp for my daughters. I'll love them fully. Mm. But if they grow up and turn into a person that doesn't want to get in line with me or at least, look, here's my goal as a parent. Teach my children how the world works. Give them the skills so they can live on their own terms and give them choice. If they choose not to make me part of their life after I've given them those things, I've still succeeded as a father. But I guess I'm asking if you're comfortable answering, obviously. But are you wanting to be a role model for your kids? Is that part a of your A thousand percent. A father should show up in every way for his children. Mm-hmm. I think I'll be better than most fathers, regardless of how many children mm-hmm. I have. I might have a hundred. Mm-hmm. But so. you think part of being a role model, it's okay for your kids not to know even their, your relationship status with their own mom? They will know their relationship but status with me and their mother. But you have other relationships with other women, too. What, what does that have to do with anything? But I'm just wondering if you think I haven't even said that. I'm just saying, like, if I mm-hmm. want to, I will. But you don't think that's a problem for your daughter to know that about their dad, that that he has multiple mistresses? That's up to my daughter, man. You know. But do you want your daughter to have a guy like that long term? If he takes care of her in every way and she has a much better life because of it, yeah. And the thing of it is, is that these red pill guys have quite a bit of influence. I have to tell you guys that even my little brother, I have a little brother. I remember he come him coming in into my room. And he's like, you know, you know, Andrew Tate is right about this, and Andrew Tate is that, and you know, and I just need to have more money. You know, I need to be fit. You know, and all of these things. And you know, and it's so funny how I had to have this discussion with my brother and be like, listen, this is not healthy. You know, masculinity that this man is preaching to you. You know, and I really had to spend some time with my brother and just go into scripture and be like, this is not what jesus wants you to be you know this is not what jesus the kind of man that the bible the word of god is calling you to be so i had to have this whole conversation with my little brother and this goes to say how these men these red pill guys have so much influence on the younger generation of men it's so interesting that you know these red pill guys will call out female promiscuity however they often don't care about male promiscuity okay they say you know male promiscuity is not really promiscuity is more access you know in fact the more access to more females a man has the more valuable he is you know 
So, but with female, it's different. And oftentimes these guys will literally use this real, the dumbest analogy that I can ever think of. But, you know, they'll talk about men and women in terms of like locks and keys. So the more locks a man can unlock, the more valuable he is. And the less locks, the less keys a woman can allow to unlock her, the more valuable she is. So but they basically, you know, reduce, you know, what it means to be a man and a woman to basically locks and keys. I think this is the dumbest kind of analogy that I've ever heard because we are not locks and keys. We're human beings created in the image of God. We have so much value, you know, so we have feelings, we have all these things, you know. And the thing of it is, is that, you know, what Lila Rose in this debate, what she does is so brilliant because she basically calls him out on this promiscuity. You know, these men will criticize these women for being promiscuous, but in the very same matter, these are the women that these men are engaging with. These are the very men who are sleeping around with a bunch of these women, you know, you know, being promiscuous, not committing to a single woman. So in a sense, in a sense they're criticizing the very thing that they're reflecting and partaking in because you'll notice a trend that these men they don't have stable homes they don't have you know a a woman by their side that is loyal and faithful to them but it's interesting how they believe in spreading their seed you know and and having no commitment having no marriage and but they consider themselves high value men it's crazy to me and i the reason why i bring this up is because essentially I love how the Bible doesn't make the issue of, you know, sexual promiscuity a male or a female issue. It makes, you know, it equalizes it because, you know, you have in Corinthians and I want to bring this to light, you know, because the Bible is so full of wisdom, you know, and people try to rationalize their behaviors and, you know, say a bunch of other things. But I love how in first Corinthians 6, 15 through 17, but I'll just focus on you know, 16 through 17, it says, Paul says, you know, he writes to the Corinthians and you have to remember that, you know, Corinth was a very sexually promiscuous town. You know, it was a, you know, the horrible sexual things that were happening in Corinth. We think things are bad now, but when you go to Corinth and I had the opportunity actually on this, um, to go through the journey of Apostle Paul and, and we stopped at Corinth and looked at, you know, different, um, or, you know, different historical things that they found. But, you know, that town was a trade town, a very promiscuous, sexually super. It was so normal for people to be promiscuous that like, you know, it was just like everyday type of thing. So and Paul really had to call out the Corinthians. And I love how Paul says here in verse 16, he starts, uh, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with with her in body for it is for it is said the two will become one flesh but whoever is united with the lord is one with him in spirit so look at this very interesting you know analogy that apostle paul brings out is that you know he who unites himself let's say with a very promiscuous woman so let's say a man who unites himself with a promiscuous woman is just as promiscuous as she is, you know? And you have these red pill guys who will criticize these women. And I'm not here defending female promiscuity or promiscuity, period. What I'm saying that this is not just a female issue, you know? Yeah, it's a horrible thing that we have this whole OnlyFans industry, this porn industry. It's just so sad, you know? But to say that, you know, a male promiscuity is somehow better or not as important, or it's something to be, you know, glorified like these red pill guys do. That is just stupidity. In fact, you know, it's it's just interesting how Lila said, you know, like if you're such a man of self control, and you're you're about this self improvement, all these things that you preach, you know, how come you fall so short from you know this moral standard? Because you know you preach all these things, but you can't even con- control your own sexual desire. You know you talk about these things in these relationships and in all these standards, but you engage with these the very women that you criticize. And you can see how like you know Justin just feels so uncomfortable. You know what I mean? He just tries to deflect. He's like, you're just annoying in this goody tushy way. You know. And, you know, because she's speaking truth and this is why he gets uncomfortable because when you start speaking about truth, you know, when you bring back that wisdom of God, it makes people feel uncomfortable because that's what truth does. Hopefully truth can 
empower us to change you know i think honestly we live in such a society where like men and women don't know how to relate to, to each other you know even on the sexual front you know it's like we cannot come to truth unless we submit ourselves to the word of god unless we understand that you know sexual relations sex all of that was designed and created by god himself you know this is god's idea you know men and female and our you know ability to relate to each other cannot be understood apart from god and whenever you take god out of the picture there's so con- much confusion that we don't even know how to deal with you know these things of like sexual relations you know and we criticize one another when these red pill guys are criticizing the very things that they are uniting themselves with and to just kind of finish off i absolutely love how you know jesus meets the samaritan woman at the well first of all he's not been he was not supposed to be talking to this woman but but jesus had a divine appointment with this woman you know he comes to the well you know and he asks for a drink you know and she gets him the water and you know and he basically brings her life to light and he talks to her you know like you know the man that you're with he's not your husband he had other five ones you know so for those days she was a very promiscuous woman but jesus t- tells her you know you're looking for some kind of fulfillment in all these relationships but you're not ever going to find them you're never going to find this fulfillment but i i have the living water that i can give you i can give you a relationship a kind of identity and you and you can be free and you can be truly happy and truly satisfied and i love how jesus completely transforms this woman's life you know that he transforms you know her promis- sexual promiscuity you know her her life is changed she departs from that and then she becomes the greatest you know missionary in samaria for jesus you know and it's amazing and and i love how the gospel you know doesn't just call out you know promiscuity you know you know jesus wouldn't just you know call these women on the panel and start calling them out you know you know and just just for the fun of it you know what i mean but you know i love how jesus so tenderly you know explains to her the issues you know the problem and he offers her you know himself he offers her a relationship with himself and you know the fact that you can you know you can come to know jesus no matter what your past is no matter you know what kind of sexually promiscuous past you've had you know if you turn away from those things turn away from this, those sins and you commit your life to jesus that you can be a new creation in him and you can be truly satisfied in him and this is why i love the gospel because the gospel is not just moralism saying oh you're wrong look at you you're horrible look what you've done there's no hope for you you know that's how these red pill guys talk about these women but the jesus jesus has a completely different heart you know whatever you're looking in sex and all this promiscuity you will never find fulfillment come to me and i can truly give you the living water you know the true life in me so i don't know guys i just wanted to talk about this and just because you know these guys these red pill guys are just having so much you know effect in shaping the male future brain and i think it's so important to preach the gospel against that because it's a, it's a demonic ideology you know just as bad as the blue haired feminists so anyway guys thank you for watching subscribe to this channel if you like the video what you're seeing what you're hearing and i'll see you guys in the next video